Got another question on the aromatic chemistry topic. So as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so the organic compound formed by reaction one, well, it's in excess sodium hydroxide because sodium hydroxide can react with the hydroxyl group here and the carboxyl group as well. So we're going to get the salt formed at each point. So we get ONA and COONA. What would you see in reaction two? So that's a reaction of salicylic acid with bromine. So the bromine would be decolorized and you would see a white precipitate. The equation for that reaction looks like this. So what's happening here is the hydrogen at this point here is being substituted for one of the bromines in a Br2 molecule. So that generates the product and it also generates an HBr molecule. Moving on to reaction three. So the reagent and conditions for the reaction. So we need to react it with um, propantuol. So we can either give the formula or the name. And this is an esterification reaction. So we need a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst and we need heat. Part B now, so the mechanism for the bromination of salicylic acid uh, as per reaction two. Importantly, it says the reaction does not need a halogen carrier and the electrophile is Br2. So what that means is bromine, the bromine molecule is gonna accept a pair of electrons. That's what electrophiles do. So where do the electrons come from? They come from the delocalized ring of pi electrons in the benzene ring of salicylic acid. So we need to draw a pair of electrons from the ring to the uh, slightly positive bromine atom of the Br2 molecule. That's going to break this bond here by heterolytic fission, which gives us this intermediate here and a bromide ion. So all we need to do now is take a pair of electrons from this carbon hydrogen bond and put them back to reform the uh, delocalized ring of pi electrons. So the upshot of that is the product and an H plus ion from this, the loss of this H from the um, benzene ring. And obviously the HBr molecule is formed from the combination of those two ions. Moving on to the comparison of the reactions of salicylic acid and benzene with bromine. So in salicylic acid, you've got a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen of the OH group. They become delocalized and part of the pi electron cloud. Um, that gives the pi electron cloud uh, a higher electron density which means it can polarize the bromine molecule and therefore attract it more readily. In benzene, obviously you don't have that. So you've just got the delocalized ring of pi electrons. Low electron density of the pi electrons means it can't polarize a bromine molecule. And finally, part C, this two-step synthesis to go from salicylic acid to this compound here, which I can't even say. Um, so the first thing you do is nitrate this and then you would reduce the nitro group that's obviously going to go onto the ring here, and that would generate the amino group. So in terms of steps, so step one, react salicylic acid with nitric acid. We don't need a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst here because of the increased reactivity due to the OH group previously discussed. So the reaction straightforward like that. So we're taking a hydrogen off and putting an NO2 group on, and obviously that H that's come off the ring, we are combine them with what's left of the nitric acid and we form H2O. Step two, we then react this nitro compound that's just been formed with a mixture of tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid. That's gonna reduce the nitro group to an amino group. Every NO2 group that's um, reduced, you need six moles of reducing agent and we get two moles of H2O formed as well. And finally, why can this react with acids to form salts? Basically, the lone pair on the nitrogen of the NH2 group can accept protons from acids via the formation of a coordinate bond. Mesalazine. Mesalazine. I think that's how you say it. 